<laughs> so we start Nintes 59A right at the top. Run the mission. Several categories of menachas. Uh, First category is yesh tuna shemen olavina. Some menachas require oil and frankincense. Second category, shemen v'loy levaina, oil with no frankincense. The third category is levaina v'loy shemen, frankincense but no oil. Fourth category is Leila Vaina Vlashem. No frankincense and no oil. It's called Hareva. Dry. Now we go through the list of the first category. The following Minachis require oil and frankincense. Okay, so we have Minchas HaSoylas. This is called um, the Minchas Soylas is when someone um, just says, I'm going to bring a Mincha, and he doesn't say what he's, he doesn't uh, define what type of Mincha he's bringing. So he brings an Isarin of Soylas. And the, all of these Menachas are going to have oil and frankincense with it. Bahamachvas is if it's done with a flat pan, it's fried in this flat pan, it becomes cr crispier. Vamarcheshes is a deep pan, because the oil sits in it, so it's like reichesh, like it creeps, like it uh, wiggles, sort of. Vahachales, vaharakikin. If he says he's going to bring a mincha that's baked in the oven, so he has either the option of bringing chalais or wafers. Who, who eats this mincha? The menachas are eaten by the kohen. Tastes good with levaina? The, the levaina actually wasn't eaten. The levaina was... You know what the levaina is? We have some here. Oh, that's nice. Cursive of Avram Exhibit A. <laughs> It's um, Levine is a sap from a tree that it dries up. When we try to burn it, it's not like burning plastic. But it's it's um, probably in the mixture of katira, so it, it smelled nice. And it was also it was scooped up, and it was all put on the on the. Uh, so it wasn't put on the mincha. It was, it was put, put on, it was put on the mincha, but then it was pushed aside when the kaimitz was done, and then it was burned separately. So if a person brought a minchas mafei tanner, it's called, a mincha that was baked in the oven, he had the option of either bringing chalais or rikikim. Minchas kayanim. A fakayan brings a mincha. The interesting thing about a fakayan brings a mincha is that even though it's a regular mincha like everyone else, however, it's not eaten. It's entirely burnt. If anyone else brings a mincha, then the kayanim eat it. Kayan brings a mincha, it's totally burnt. Minchas Kayin Mashiach, if the Kayin Gadol brings a Mincha, not if, he does, he brings a Mincha every day, uh, and he divides it in half, half is in the morning, half is in the afternoon, it's called Minchas Chavitin, and so his Mincha require all of this list requires Shemin and Levaina. Mincha Sevit Kechavim, if a guy brings a Mincha, he says, I'm going to bring a Mincha, he brings oil and, and Levaina on it. Minchas Nashim, if women bring a Mincha, she decides, I want to, I want to offer a mincha as well. Mincha <coughs> Sa'aymer. And the mincha Sa'aymer. 
the offering that's brought on the second day of Pesach is brought from barley. That requires oil and levina. My Gemara, it makes it easy for me, and it has a period, a period right there. Do your Gemaras have a period there? Mm. Um, because when you have a list, you don't know where it switches. Because right now it switches to Minchas Nesachim Ta'an Shem and Vein Ta'an Levayna. Minchas Nesachim. Together with every animal that's brought as a carbon, you bring together with it flour and oil. Now, the ratio of flour to oil by the Minchas Nesachim was different than by the other ones. For each Yisarin, there was two lug or three lug, it depends on which animal. Okay, but there's no Levayna on that. There's wine that's brought on the side, but that's not on the mincha. Lechem apanim ta'on levayna vein ta'on shemen. There's the third category. Lechem apanim has two spoons, bazichen, of levayna that go on the table, but there's no oil on the lechem apanim. Shtei alechem, the two breads of shavuos, which are brought from wheat. Minchas chaytei is the sin offering that if someone doesn't have the, the money to do the full offerings, it's a carbon oil of the year, he ends up bringing a mincha. U minchas knois, in a saita offering, is also a dry mincha, the eintun in loy shem and v'loy levayna. There's no uh, um, ad- added things in it. It's just plain the, the flour itself. Okay, Amar of Papa. Interesting that we jump so many years to Rav Papa. Just usually, usually the way the Gemara works in, in levels. Um, it starts with the earlier generations of Amiraim, and then it uh, it continues on. Here we jump all the way to a student of Rava. It's like the fifth generation of Amiraim. Amar of Papa, Kol Hecha de Tanan, Eser Tanan. Whenever you have this list. Of Menachos, we'll give you two pshatim here. The first pshat in Rashi is every mincha has ten loaves. All of these, all of these Menachos that we gave a list, that you have oil and you have levaina. The first category, they each have ten loaves. You take the flour and you break, make it into bilkalach or, or matzis, whichever one it's doing. But there's always going to be ten loaves. Okay. It's excluding what Reb Shimon holds. Reb Shimon is always Reb Shimon Bar-Yuchai, and his opinion is that if someone brings a minchas mafetana, a mincha that's baked in the oven, so we said that you have an option of either bringing chalas or rekikin, chalas or wafers or matzas. It doesn't mean chametz; it means that it was made uh, thicker. Um, Reb Shimon says that it, it's not that you have an option to bring chalais or matzis. You have a third option. You can bring chalais or matzis or chalais and matzis. Five and five. That wasn't, that we didn't know about. So according to, to Reb Shimon, there would be actually five chalais and five rakikin instead of ten. So in other words, what Rav Papa is saying is kol hecha de tenan, eser tenan, there's always ten chalas. That's a, that's saying not like Rib Shimon that says there could be five. This is the first pshat of Rashi. Rashi gives another pshat, beautiful pshat. He says, "Kol hecha ditanan." Whenever we have this list in the Mishnah, there's always a list of ten menaches. If you go through, you count it out. You have soiles and machavas, marcheshes, chalas, rakikin, kayanim, kain mashiach, eved kechavim, nashim, and oimer is ten. Whenever you have this list, you have 10. This is excluding Reb Shimon, because according to Reb Shimon, you would have 11, because you would have Chalis in Rikikin would have been Chalis Rikikin separately, and then you have Chalis Rikikin together. That would be an 11th type of, yeah. of Mincha. And we're saying La Fukim with Reb Shimon that we don't go like that. Tanu Rabbanon. Who says the other chat, the first one? You said? Rashi brings both. And he brings both, he says, Alishna Achrina. You see Lamed Aleph in the Rashi. Lamed Aleph, Kol Hecha de Tanan. Very interesting. Because the first one's on, like a serious machlaik, like this. The second one is like. You know. yeah, the, the, the outcome is the same. <laughs> it's just the question is when you say 10, 
are you referring to ten loaves? Or the list has ten types. Why, according to the second ones, they're not arguing about the ten loaves. Oh, but ultimately they really are. Because, because we don't accept Reb Shimon, who says that you can have five of this and five of that, that means ultimately we don't do that. You still need the ten. Just the question is, when we said ten, are we referring to ten loaves or are we referring to the list of ten? Mm-hmm. And then it comes out the same thing. Okay. Tanu Rabbanon. Rabbanon taught in the Brisa. This is quoted from the Teres Kayanim. The Brisa is in the Sifra. The Medrash on Vayikra is called the Sifra. It's called Teres Kayanim. Sifra means the Sefer. So this is the important Medrash. It says, Benasata Oleo Shemen. You will put on it oil. And when it says you'll put on it oil, it's referring to the carbon mincha. The minchas bikurim carbonecha. Um, I'm sorry. Vim takar minchas bikurim la Hashem. If when you bring this, it says aviv kali ba'ish geres carmel geres carmel v'nasata le Hashem. And it's referring to the oimet. On the second day of Pesach, you bring the first of the of the grain. You put on it oil. The pasuk continues. It says v'samta le alavani. You put on it frankincense. Mincha he it is a mincha. So the Bryce and Teres Kainim explains these words. It says, first of all, what's the Aleha? The first Aleha. You will put on it oil. What does it mean, on it? And not on the Lechem Aponim. You only put on the Mincha Sa'imer oil, but you don't put it on the Lechem Aponim. Why don't you put on it? We're going to see, because we're going to... We have to exclude something. And we say, maybe we should exclude something else. And then we're going we're gonna to go back and forth. We're going to see that it's the Lechem Apanim that we're talking about. So Yachal, because I could have thought, you know, I need a Pasuk to tell me that there's no oil, because I could have thought that there really is oil. Why? Valei Dinhu. It's, when it says Valei Dinhu, is it not Kal That's what it means. Is it not logical? Uma min nesachim. When it comes to the flour and oil that comes along with a carbon. She'ina tuna levaina, that doesn't have any frankincense. All there is is flour, oil, and the wine that's on the side. But the flour and oil, it's called minchas nesachim. It doesn't have levaina. But to unashemen, but it requires oil. It's a lechem apanim, shetan levaina. The lechem apanim that requires levaina. Ain't a din shetan shemen. If something that doesn't require levaina, frankincense needs oil, so something that needs the frankincense for sure needs oil. Talmud Laimar Aleha. It says no. You put oil on the Mincha Sa'imer, you don't put <coughs> oil on the Lechem Apanim. Aleha Shemen, Valeha Lechem Apanim Shemen. Okay, the Gemara is going to ask who says it's this, maybe it's other thing. The Samta Aleha Levaina. The Bryce is continuing. It, it would be great if, if um, the words of the Pasuk would be highlighted in bold and you would see what's happening, how it's like uh, being explained. But you have to just follow along. You place on it frankincense. This is referring to, again, the Oymer. It's the continuation of the Pasuk. On the Minchas Oymer, you put frankincense. And you don't put it on the Nesachim that come along with the Karban. Because it's possible that it could have been different. It's logical that there should have been Levaina on the Minchas Nesachim. Uma Lechem Apanim. Usually, ma means what, but when it, when you do the comparisons, the ma means just as or whereas, whereas for, ma lechem apanim, whereas for or just as the lechem apanim, she'in ton shemen it doesn't have oil, by the lechem apanim, but ton levaina, but it requires frankincense. So minchas nesachim she'tuuna shemen. The min, the nesachim does require oil. Ain't it din she'tuuna levaina? For sure, it should require frankincense. It's exactly the same logic as we said before, which is that the lechem apanim have frankincense. So, um, the lechem apanim, the lechem apanim, we're learning that the I, I, that I could have thought that I should put uh, the, the the lechem apanim don't have oil, but they have frankincense. So the nesachim. Which do have oil, for sure should have frankincense. So Talmud Laimar, Allah, 
No, the Pasuk says no. Don't use that logic. You don't put frankincense on the Minchas Nesachim. The, the Pasuk concludes with the words Mincha hi. It is a Mincha. So the, so the, the Brisa explains those words. Mincha, when it calls it a Mincha, that's inclusive. L'Rabbis Mincha Shmini L'Levaina. It's including the inauguration offering that was brought that one time on Rosh Chodesh Nisan, the eighth day, that required Levaina. Then it says, He, L'Haitzi Shtei Alechem. The He, Mincha, it is a Mincha, it's excluding the sacrifice that's brought on Shavuos, the two loaves of bread, Shleyetinu Leishem and Valei Levaina. The Mincha is inclusive, the He is, ex- is exclusive. Saying that you don't have on the Shtei Alechem oil in Levaina. Which is what we had in the Mishnah. Okay, Amar Mar. What did we say, Amar Mar? Is explaining a brisa. So we just had a brisa that's explaining the pasuk. Now the Gemara goes ahead, Amar Mar, the master said, it goes back to the brisa and it's going to explain the brisa. So there's, there's layers here of, of interpretation. Amar Mar, Aleha Shemen Valaya Lechem Apanim Shemen. You put on the Minchas Oimer, the second day of Pesach, the barley, the grain that was brought, was roasted, you put on it oil. But you don't put on the lechem upon him, the showbread that's brought every for every Shabbos. You don't put on that oil. The Gemara asks, okay, Ema, shall we say or let us say Aleo shemen, blame in chaskainim shemen? Why? Where do you get that? It's uh, out of all the men, you, you know you listed uh, you listed fifteen uh, menachas here, ten uh, plus another uh, a bunch. Where do you get? Specifically, the lechem upon him. Maybe it's referring to the minchas kainim. Vleyam minchas kainim shemen. That no oil should go on the on the kainim's mincha. The kainim's mincha gets totally burnt. So he says, "Mistaber minchas kainim havlei l'rebuye." No, it's logical that the minchas kainim should go into the group that does get oil. It should be included in that group. Why? Okay. Now you have to follow along because each word here is going to say why the Minchas Kayanim is more similar than the Lechem Apanim. And then we're going to say that maybe the Lechem Apanim is more similar. Each word is another din. So it says, why should it be? Shekeni Sarin. The Karban Aymer was brought as a Nisarin. And the Minchas Kainim is brought as a Nisarim. However, the Lechem Apanim is two Israinim, right? Lechem Apanim is two Israinim. Yeah, we say Shnei Israinim Selas. No, that doesn't make sense. Shnei Israinim Selas Mincha Belula, Vashem, that's Mincha Belula. Did we mention the Lechem Apanim on uh, the Shabbos davening? Okay. Let me see if they quote the Pasuk here that the... But Siri is talking about the Lechem Apanim. No, it says... Kohanim can make a Tumah, so... One second. Before you get to the Tumah, wait, uh, wait. The first thing is that we're doing a comparison. It's going to mention to me, yeah. yeah. But we're doing chilling, a ca- the chilling sheet. <laughs> yeah, but you're on the wrong answer. Oh, okay. Wait, hold it, hold Sorry. it. Uh, slow, slow, you're yeah, rushing. The first halacha is um, that the minchas kayanim is brought as an isaran. That's the measurement. And the same thing is the minchas aimer. Vaha aimer asir seifei is an isaran. However, the shteya, the the lechem apanim, it says. It says, Shnei Yisrenim Yeh HaChalo Achas. It should be two Yisrenim. Okay. So it's the, 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 there's a, the comparison of the Minchas Kainim is, is closer so far to the Lechem Apanim. To, to, the, to the, I'm sorry, it's closer to the Oim. The next thing is, Kaili. We learned yesterday that the Minchas, that the Lechem Apanim was not needed in a vessel. It could have been needed on a piece of, on a piece of uh, leather. Remember we learned that? But this needs to be in a keli in a nisarin. <coughs> and uh, it's needed in a nisarin. 
It's it's needed, not in a shine, it's needed in a vessel, in a in a in a Klisharis. Chutz the Oimer and the Minchas Kayanim is not done in the Heichal. It's done Chutz. Vitsura. Vitsura means that if it's left overnight, it loses its form. However, the the Lechem Apanim stays for a whole week. So the, the Minchas Kainim is similar to the Lechem, to the Oimer. Hagasha. It needs to go to be brought to the corner of the Mizbeach. The Lechem Apanim is not brought to the corner of the Mizbeach. We're c- comparing the Minchas Kainim to the Oimer, why it should be the same as the Oimer, that it should require oil, and the Lechem Apanim shouldn't. The Ishim, and it's also burnt. The Minchas Kainim and the Aymer, the both of them are burnt. The Lechem Apanim is not burnt, it's eaten by the Kainim. The Gemara says one second. Okay, you told me all of these comparisons. How many were there? One, Isarin, Keli, Chutz, Tzura, Hagasha, and Ishim. Six. Adar Abba, on the contrary, Lechem Apanim Havalei L'Rabuyin. Lechem Apanim is more similar to the Aymer. Now here you go. Shekain, Tzibura. Lechem Apanim is a community offering. The Aymer is a community offering. Minchas Kainim is an individual. Chayva, it's an obligation. The Lechem Apanim and the Aymer. Kainim is a donation. Tamya. Here, it's brought bitoma. If everyone is tame, you can still bring it when they're tame. That's the rule that tuma hut the chuya hutra betzibar. That if the community is tame, you still bring these community sacrifices, which means the oimer or the lechem apanim, but not a minchas kainim. The achel, it's eaten. The, the remnants of the Oimer were eaten. And the Lechem Apanim is eaten. But the Minchas Kainim is totally burnt. Okay, Pigula. This is interesting. Pigul <coughs> only applies to something that has a Mater, that some part of it is brought on the Mizbeach, and the rest is left over. Um, so the Oimer has a part that's brought on the Mizbeach, and the, there's a part that's left over. The lechem apanim, although they're not brought on the mizbeach, but the two f- spoonfuls of frankincense are, are brought on the mizbeach, and then the lechem apanim is considered the shirayim, what's left over. So, if the thoughts of pigel, pigel means that a person has intention that he's going to do one of the services or eat this after the uh, appropriate time for the sacrifice, what's left over becomes pigel, and if someone eats it, he's chayv karis, very serious uh, halachas. But something that's entirely burnt, that has nothing left over, there's no halachas of pigel on that. So minchas kainim don't have pigel. But the oimer and the shteyale and the, and the lechem apanim do have pigel. Bishabata, they're both brought on Shabbos. The oimer, if it, the second day of Pesach falls out on Shabbos, for us it doesn't happen because Pesach can't be on a Friday. But if, if those days, if it would fall on Shabbos, so it was brought. So how many do we have here? Tzibura, Chayva, Tamya, Da'achel, Pigula, B'Shabbat, there's also six. The Gemara says, one second. Mistabra, it's logical that the Minchas Kayanim should have oil. And it uses a source, not from the Oimer. Our whole thing is discussing comparison to the Oimer. It uses a source from the Minchas Silas. It says nefesh, and it says nefesh by these menachas, which compares these menachas together, and all of them have oil, so therefore the menachas kainim should have oil, but it doesn't say the word nefesh by the lechem apanim, so the, nefesh, the lechem apanim gets excluded, the lechem apanim doesn't have oil, and what's the word that excludes it? It's the comparison to oila, which is aleha, only on the minchas, on the oimer, on, only on the Oimer is there oil, but not on the, on the Lechem upon him. Okay, we're up to the next case. Omar Mar. Again, we're going through the Brisa of the, of the, which is, you see, originally, the, the way it worked was that Moshe Rabbeinu gave us the, the Psukim with the commentary. 
the commentary on those psukim was put into the brises, into the mishnayas. The mishnayas, you don't see the, the psukim that it's explaining. It's like it, it, w- it was recategorized without the psukim. But the brises still have the psukim there. So when you look at these brises, you have the very few mishnayas of psukim. When you look at these brises, it goes literally according to the pasuk, and it's explaining each each one. So what we're doing is we're taking this brisa that's explaining the pasuk, and we're explaining the brisa. So it's the gemara and the brisa. So Amar Mar, the master said, Aleha. It says in the pasuk, Vesamta Aleha Levaina. Before we explain the Aleha of Vesamta Aleha Shemen, now we're explaining another Aleha. On it, you put on it on the Oimer Levaina. You put on it levaina, v'leil minchas nesachem levaina, but you don't put on the, the flour and oil that comes along with the carb with the carbon frankincense. Ema the Gemara asks, Ema shall we say aleil levaina v'leil minchas kainim levaina? Maybe you shouldn't put on the on the kainim's offering levaina, which we do, but maybe you shouldn't because you only do the oimer, not on the minchas kainim. So it's mishkaver minchas kainim havli l'rubi. It's more logical that the minchas kainim is more similar to the oimer than. The Minchas Nesachim. Okay, before we were mixing in Lechem Apanim versus Minchas Kainim. Now it's uh, Minchas Nesachim versus Minchas Kainim. Minchas Kainim versus Minchas Nesachim. Okay, why? Shekein Isarin. We said this already. It's, already. it's brought as an Isarin. The Minchas Nesachim is not one Isarin. It's Shnei Yisrainim Lapar. Shlei Yisrainim Lapar. Shnei Yisrainim Laayel. It's it's other ty- it's other amounts, so the minchas kainim is more similar to the aimer. Balul, balul belug. It's mixed with one lug. By the isa- by the by the nesachim, it's shlisha sahin, revia sahin. You have two lug, three lug. You have more than one lug. Mugash. This is brought close to the to the corner. Biglal etzem. These two offerings are brought on their own without another sacrifice that's brought along with it. The minchas nesachim is a auxiliary. Tag-along. It's a tag along that comes along with the actual sacrifice. So how many did we had? We had isaron, bal belug, mugash, and biglal etzem. We have four. Mar says other abba minchas nesachim abler ribu. You know minchas nesachim should have levaina. It's more similar. Shekain tzibura. It comes with community offerings, just like the Oimer's community. Chayva, it's an obligation to bring it along with the offering. Vigitme, <coughs> it's brought out even if the, everyone's tame, because of the community. And Beshabata, exactly the same, it's brought on Shabbos. It says Mustab Nefesh. By Minchas Kainim, it says Nefesh. So it's more similar to the other Menachas that have uh, Levina. Okay, then it says Mincha. And we said the word Mincha, Mincha He. This is a, it is a mincha. The mincha is inclusive. Mincha l'rabis mincha shmini l'levaina is coming to include the, shmi, the, the inauguration offering on the eighth day. That that needs frankincense. Ve'ima l'haitzi. How do you know it's coming to include? Maybe it's coming to exclude? One second. It says, hi mai. Hi mai means, like, uh, what's going on? This what? Like, what are you saying? E amrit bishleima. It, if you say, it is good if you say, the rabbis that we're coming to include something, then shaper. But if you're coming to exclude, lamali. I don't need to exclude anything. I would never say that that's comparable. It's because that was a temporary offering, and this offering is for all generations, the Aymer. So I would never say that it's comparable anyway. So if I'm coming to exclude it, that, oh, there's no Levina. I, I, it's, How do you include it? If so it's therefore, if it says Mincha, Mincha says that not only is the Mincha Sa'imer ha- have Levina, but also the Mincha Shmini also has Levina. If it would have been excluding Mincha Shmini from Levina, so look, it doesn't say Levina by it anyway. Why would you compare it to the Aymer? The Oimer is brought in all generations every year. This is just a temporary offering. There's no comparison. But if the rule show me the Ursula Yofin, then why does it apply to ah, so Kamash, Kamash Malan, that's the Chiddush. You know, the natural thing, the natural uh, um, 
uh, approach would be that we don't learn. And so therefore, Shami Dairis. So therefore, if I don't say anything, I would just leave it at that. Shami Dairis. So comes along the Reba to teach me that no, over here you will learn Shami Dairis. As if you leave it alone, the, the problem is the word Mincha, the, 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 the extra word. It's got to be teaching me something. Okay. Um, the amazing thing about this Medrash is that it shows how early it is. Because when did we need to know this? The first year when we came out of the desert. Mm. You follow? We needed this halacha back then. This was a, okay. He, the last word of the Shlisi, Torah. The first law that we need. <laughs> Don't listen. It's busy. He, it is a mincha. Lahitzi shtei alechem. This he is ex- is excluding. It is. It's excluding the shtei alechem. Shleitin olay shemen of lay levaina. It is a mincha, but the two breads on shvuas do not have oil or levaina. It says veima lahitzi minchas kainim. Maybe it's coming to exclude the minchas kainim. Exactly what we did before. We're going to do exactly the same thing. It makes more sense that the minchas kainim should have oil and levaina, and we'll exclude the shtei alechem. Why? Shekeni sarin. How much was the shtei alechem? But all this alachot of the kohanim and the korbanot. It's mitchilat itziad mitzrayim, but the moment they build the mishkan and have to build and they have to sacrifice, they have to know these alachos. Correct. So everything, all this is mincho, right. is from beginning. Right. I'm just saying that this was relevant only in the beginning, right. only on one day, ah, okay. only on the first day. And I'm saying all this whole halacha was just for one that one day. This is mitzrayim. Don't you understand that? Okay, so the minchas kainim is in Isarim. I'm not sure. Does it say over there how much, how, how, how many, how large the uh, the um, shtei alechem was? East to Isarim of flour, as opposed to the shtei alechem, which had. Doesn't say. That's so interesting. What is it the same? Shtei alechem had in Isarim as well. That would be so strange. You see, we try, we're making a comparison and the contrast. We're comparing the <coughs> minchas kainim and we're con- contrasting it to the minchas, to the shtei alechem. Okay. Kaili. It needs a vessel. The, um, the shtei alechem don't need a vessel. Oh, I'm sorry. The, the, the Rashi up here explains it. refers to? To Isharan? Yeah. Okay. So then that's why it's not comparable to the Aymer. The shtei alechem doesn't need to be.